Hi, and welcome to this lesson on converting position time graphs to velocity time graphs. For this lesson, we'll be using the information in this position time graph shown here and convert it into a velocity time graph down here. The key question we ask when we convert position time to velocity time is, what is the slope being displayed on the position time graph? So in this case, we can see that we have three distinct seg segments. One segment here where we have some sort of positive slope. The second segment shown here, in which the slope looks pretty much zero. And then this third segment where we have a, a downward slope on our graph. So we'll be using those three segments and analyzing each one individually because it shows a distinct type of motion. So let's divide it up. I'll use a, a dotted line to kind of keep separate these three segments. So we have the zero to two second mark, the two to five, and then the five to 10 second marks. Let's look at the first segment. In that first segment, we have uh, a starting position of zero, shown right here. And as the graph moves in two seconds, it rises eight meters. So eight meters up on our graph, two seconds is our run. So to calculate the slope of that segment, you would say that the slope is equal to the rise over the run. In this case, we have a, a rise of positive eight meters in two seconds is our run. So we end up with a slope equal to four, and the units are meters per second. So for the time period of zero to two seconds, we have a constant slope or a constant velocity of four meters per second. So we'll put that onto our graph here. So from zero to two seconds on our velocity time graph, here is our constant velocity or constant slope, four meters per second. Let's move on to the second segment. In the second segment here, you can see our starting position is at the eight meter mark, and we move along for three seconds. So our run is three seconds, but our rise is zero. So for this segment, our slope, which is equal to our rise over our run, for the second segment, the rise is zero meters, the run is three seconds, so our velocity is zero meters per second. So moving to our velocity time graph, for this time interval from two to five seconds, we'll show that it had a constant slope or constant velocity represented by this line right on the origin, zero meters per second. We'll just connect these two lines now. Let's look at the third segment. In the third segment, we start at a position of positive eight, and in five seconds, we drop down to the minus seven meter mark. That's a drop of 15 meters, or moving backwards 15 meters, if you like. And the run is represented by how far we move along the x-axis is five seconds. So our slope for the third segment is equal to our rise over our run. In this case, our rise is actually a drop, or it goes backwards 15 meters. The run is five seconds, so we have a slope equal to minus three meters per second. So on our velocity time graph, we'll show that from five to 10 seconds, our object traveled negative three meters per second. So starting at the five second mark, all the way to the 10 second mark, it had this constant velocity, connect the lines here, constant velocity of negative three meters per second. So as you can see, when analyzing position time graphs, we go through a process in which we first of all identify the uh, different segments or the different velocities shown by the graph. Then we analyze the slope and figure out the slope for each of those segments. And we show the slope on our velocity time graph, ensuring that we match up the time intervals. So the first time interval here from zero to two seconds, we show the slope from the position time graph. Our second segment here represents the slope from two to five seconds, and our third interval here represents the slope from five to 10 seconds.